if a, b, and c are different positive integers, what is the least possible value of a to the power of 3, b squared plus c? The key, I think, this question was the fact that they said different. That makes it uh, a little bit easier, perhaps. So we want the least possible. So let's say a, well, we have to choose positive integers. So the smallest positive integer is 1. And I can't choose 1 for b because they're different. So I'll choose 2. And then for c, I'll choose 3. And let's see what happens. So we got 1 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 2, plus 3, 1 plus 4 plus 3. And that is 8, and that is indeed the correct answer. And I you know, encourage you to try other variations and see if you can get an, a number smaller than 8, and you won't be able to because this is indeed the correct answer. The measures of triangles T's, 2's largest angles, have the same difference as the measure of its two smallest angles. If the measure of Triangle T's largest angle is 100. What is the measure of its smallest angle? So we have some triangle. Let's draw a triangle. And let's say we have A, B, and C as the angles. And let's just say A is bigger than B and B is bigger than C. So for any triangle, we know that the sum of the angles is 180. So that's an immediate fact. And then based on what they're telling me, the sentence there, uh, that would mean, uh, so let's see here, A minus B is the same as B minus C. So that's the uh, interpretation of that sentence. And I think that's it. I think th these two equations should be enough to solve, but there's one more piece of information, this one. So that basically means that A is 100. Okay, so here we go. From this equation, I would get that a plus c is equal to 2b. Plug that into here, and then a plus c is 2b, so it would be 2b for that a plus c, then the b is equal to 180. So that means 3b is 180, b is therefore 60. And then since a is 100, b is 60, c would therefore be, let's see here, 100 plus 60 plus c is 180. So therefore c would be 20, I guess. The powers of 10 nearest in value to 10 to the power of 2004, but not equal to it, are 10a and 10b. If a is not equal to b, what is the value of a plus b? All right, uh, well, let's see. We got 10 to the power of a, 10 to the power of 2020, 2004, and 10 to the power of b. Now, the obvious kind of makes me think of 2003 for a, and then 2005 for b. B, but for some reason I'm thinking that can't be the answer just because it's too easy it, it wouldn't be that easy and then therefore a would a plus B would be uh, 2003 plus 2005 which is 2008 but oh sorry sorry not 2008 4008 but I, I'm, I'm confident that's not the correct answer because it can't be that simple so what is the correct answer? Well, I think an easier way of looking at this, these are very large powers, right? And obviously impossible to write them out. But so let's look at small powers. And if I look at small powers, it probably would be easier to understand. So let's say, instead of this big, big number, I actually asked you to compare 10 to the power of 3. OK, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. And I asked the exact same question, that which two powers of 10 are closest in value? Okay, well, let's see. Well, 10 to the power of 2, which is 100, that is within 900 of that. 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000, which is 9,000 uh, away. But what about 10 to the power of 1? That's 10, and that compared to this is 909, sorry, 10 com compared to 1,000 is 990. So which two are closest to this guy? It's this one and this one. Because this uh, 10 to the power of 1 is 990 away from 1,000. And this 10 to the power of 2 is 900 away from 1,000. But this one is 9,000 away. 
You see what I mean? So that's not the closest. We, we're only looking for uh, two. So therefore, by the same principle, if you go back to our original equation here, it would be 10 to the power of 2002 that would actually be closer in value to our main number than this guy here. So therefore, the A and B would be this and this. So A plus B would therefore be 2002 plus 2003, which is 4005. 4005 is the answer. The range of sine uh, negative 1x is given by sine negative 1x is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. What are all values of x greater than 0 that satisfy sine negative 1 of the log of x to the base 2 greater than 0? Okay. Oh, boy. Well, hmm, where do I begin with this here? Well, first of all, um, sine of negative 1 of the log of x to the base 2 is greater than 0. Let's just work with that first. So the sine of something is greater than 0. Okay. The sine of something is greater than the inverse sine, actually. Not even, sorry, I have to make sure I, I even state it properly because it's negative 1. So it would be inverse. The inverse sine of something is greater than 0. But this up here tells me that the inverse sine of x is less than pi over 2. So that means that this inverse sine of something, whatever that something is, is less than pi over 2. So this, these two things actually give me a range. It gives me a range that sine of something, whatever it is, Whatever you want to put in here, whether you want to put x or whether you want to put log of x to the base 2, which is what I'll put since that's what they're concentrating on, is between pi over 2 and 0 based on the parameters that they gave me. And that's all I'm trying to do is tr trying to get some parameters first before I solve the question. Okay. And now let's try to solve the question. The first one I will use is uh, this one here, this one up here. So let's bring that down here. So we have uh, the sine, the inverse sine of log x to the base 2 is greater than 0. So that means that the sine of 0 would be less than the log of x to the base 2. And that means 2 to the power of 0 is less than x, and therefore x is greater than 1. Okay, that's actually a pretty good finding. Now let's look at this guy to get the other, uh, I guess, end of the spectrum. That one tells me that the sine of, well, I put x in there, but this could be anything. Uh, we're actually going to use that log guy, the log of x to the base 2 is less than pi over 2. So by the same principle, sine of pi over 2 would be greater than or equal to, uh, sorry, this should be a, a greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. So this is greater than or equal to log of x to the base 2. Two Sine of pi over 2 is a 1, right? Yeah, 1 is the log of x to the base 2. So therefore, 2 to the power of 1 is greater than or equal to x. And that means that x is less than or equal to 2. So we just then combine those two, this one and this one. So x is greater than 1 and less than or equal to 2. So there we go. That is the range that they're looking for. For x between negative 1 and 1, the graph of y is equal to x to the power of 3 minus x appears at the right has a minimum at x equals root 3 over 3 and a maximum at negative root 3 over 3. What are the both values of k for which x to the power of 3 minus x plus k equals 0 has exactly two different real roots? Exactly two. All right. This graph up here, uh, we this currently looks like it has 1, 2, 3 roots, uh, which looks to me like uh, negative 1, 0, and 1. 
So that would be three roots. But they want us to concentrate on this graph and look at it in a way that there's only two roots. So this is very similar to this. The only difference is you've got this k in here. So x to the power of 3 minus x plus k means that it's actually going, it's just shifting up or down depending on whether k is positive or negative. So for example, if k is positive, so let me just put that here. If k is positive, then the graph would, this graph up here, would basically just go up. Uh, let's see if I, how I can draw that carefully here. It would just go up like this. Yeah. And the reason I draw it like that is because I've got to make sure that it only crosses the axis twice because I want exactly two different roots. I can't have three and so on. And I can't have one. So that's that. Okay. And they told me that this min and max occur at a certain value. So the minimum occurred at root 3 over 3. So when I shifted it up, that still this point is still root 3 over 3. And that's very helpful. Yeah. So when x is root 3 over 3, that means what? What does it mean for the y value? It means y is 0 because it's a root. Okay, so that, that's actually good. That's how we're going to do it. Okay, so let's do the math. Let's do the algebra. Uh, so we're going to take this equation and plug root 3 over 3 for the value of x. Root 3 over 3. And that will allow me to figure out the value for k. So... Um, Hold on, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Okay, so this would be 3 root 3 over 27 minus root 3 over 3 plus k. Common denominator, and multiply top and bottom by 9, I believe. So that would be 3 root 3 minus 9 root 3 over 27 plus k is 0. So that means minus 6 root 3 over 27 plus k is 0. And therefore, k, let's put, move this up a bit. k is going to be 6 root 3 over 27. And I think that, um, I think that um, uh, reduces to 2 root 3 over 9, I believe. 2 root 3 over 9. OK, great. But that was just for k equals 0. We also have to do the one for k is less than 0. If k is less than 0, then Uh, then we have to figure it out for a slightly different graph. It, it, it just means that the graph would be pulled down. This original graph up here would be p uh, translated down. So let me see if I can draw that carefully to make it seem like it has only two roots. So it would be something like this here. It would touch there, and then it would go back down, and it would come back up like this. So here's my first root, and here's my second root. And then, of course, these go on forever. Okay, now the good news is we know this is uh, similar to up here. It's the max on that graph, and they told me that the max happens at x equals minus root 3 over 3. So this is minus root 3 over 3, that point. And when x is equal to minus root 3 over 3, it's a root, so y is equal to 0. So same story. We've got to do the same thing that we did up there, but this time for this value. So here we go. Let's do that. Minus root 3 over 3, all cubed. Minus root 3 over, oh, hold on. Minus, minus root 3 over 3. Got to make sure I put those correctly. And plus k is equal to 0. So this would be minus 3 root 3 over 27. This would be plus uh, root 3 over 3 plus k. Top and bottom by 9, so that would be minus 3 root 3 plus 9 root 3 uh, over 27 plus k is 0. 
and therefore, what is that? Uh, 6 root 3 over 27 plus k is 0. k is equal to minus 6 root 3 over 27. And there, if you, again, reduce it, minus 2 root 3 over 9. So very similar to this one. It's just the, the sign is different. Sign is opposite. Those are the two values of k. At the end of a race, each of the top three finishers stands inside a different circle, each of the circles with respective radius lengths 1, 4 over 9, and r is externally tangent to the other two. What is the only value of r less than 4 over 9 for which there exists a single line to which all three circles are tangent? Well, first let's draw this. I need, first of all, I need a single line. Okay, let me draw that line first. Okay. And then I've got to draw three circles that are all tangent to it, but let's see, that one is the radius of 1, 1 is 4 over 9, and 1 is r, and they're saying r is less than 4 over 9. So they're obviously three different sizes. So let's see here. Let's make the, this is the big one. And I know that looks a little bit more than just tangent, but you guys will forgive me. It's not going to be a perfect diagram. And then we'll put the small guy in here. Okay, that's pretty good. I usually use the the circle app, or not the app, but the circle tool. Actually, that's the square tool. There's one where you can make a circle. And then it, 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 I actually have a hard time even finding it, so that's why I don't even bother. Yeah, you guys get the point. So that's a pretty decent diagram, so let's work with this now. So let's draw some centers. And let's draw some tangent points. So this is the center. And then I think I'm going to have to connect them. There we go. That's one connection. Like that. Right. And then anything else? I'll draw a line straight across here. And I'm just trying to think if I need anything else. Uh, I'll just leave it, uh, leave it like that for now. And then if I need anything else, I'll add it later. Now I need to draw some uh, labels here. So this point right here I'll call A. Uh, this center I'll call B. And then this point over here I'll call C. This center I'll call E. And this center I will call... Uh, well, I should have called it D and then E, but it doesn't matter. Okay, well, we know for a fact, because these are drawn in a way that these are right angles, they're purposely, I've drawn them in the way that they're parallel lines, that AB plus BC is going to be the same as DE, right? So each of these should have a mathematical uh, equation. So let's see here if I can do that. AB plus BC is equal to DE. So let's carefully try to figure out what this is. So AB, from A to B, hmm, what would that be? I'm going to have to use Pythagoras here. And as I initially thought, I will have to draw another line from E to B like that. So AB using Pythagoras would be what? The hypotenuse uh, which would be the 2 radii, which would be 4 over 9 plus r squared, and then minus e, ae, which is minus ae, which would be 4 over 9 minus r. Yeah, and then, of course, the square root, because we, we, do, we want ab, the actual distance. I think that's right. Let me just see. 4 over 9 plus r, all squared, minus 4 over 9. Yeah. Okay, now let's BC would be similar, but again, I'm going to have to draw a line from B to D. Again, BC, um, let's see, BC would be, hmm, BC, this time we're using 1 and R this time. So it would be 1 plus R, all squared, minus 1 minus R, all squared, under the square root sign. Okay, great. And then finally, DE. Well, DE, the, the triangle's already made, so that's good. 
So DE would be the hypotenuse, which would be 1 plus 4 over 9, I guess. All squared minus uh, 1 minus 4 over 9. Yeah, all squared. Okay, so there you go. That's the math. And what are we trying to figure out here? Of the, the value of R. Okay, so this should be fairly straightforward. So we just got to expand this. Now I'm tempted to sort of tell you to expand it instead of me having to do it, but I'll, I'll do it. What the heck? 4 over 9 squared plus 2 times 4 over 9 r plus r squared minus 4 over 9 squared plus 2 times 4 over 9 r uh, minus r squared, all under the square root sign. So that takes care of this guy. Then the next one. 1 plus 2r plus r squared minus 1 um, plus 2r minus r squared. That's also under the square root. And then the, the other guy, well, 1 plus 4 over 9 is 13 over 9. So that's 13 over 9 squared. Well, these are just numbers. So, so that's, that's easy. And then this one would be uh, 5 over 9 squared. Okay, here we go. So let's see here. A lot, of, a lot of this stuff cancels, so that makes our life easy. So that one is just going to be, I guess, 4 times 4 over 9r, all under the square root sign. And then this one, let's see, the 1s cancel, the r squareds cancel, so that's going to be 4r under the square root sign. And this one, uh, let's see here, 169 minus 25 over 81 all squared. Okay, that's it. not as bad as I thought. So let's see here. So what do I do now? 16 over 9r all under the square root sign plus 4 over r is 144, I guess, over 81. OK, so this is 4 over 3 root r plus 2 root r, 144 over 81. and. Uh, the common denominator, so 3 and 3, so 6, so 10 root r over 3 is 144 over 81. Uh, hold on here. I think I, I missed something here. This square root I missed. Sorry about that. I knew there was something. These numbers seem too big. So then this would be 12 over 9 so when I actually wrote it correctly. And then so this is going to be... Oh, sorry, uh, what did I do here? Uh, yeah, no, that's right. 12 over 9 can be re uh, reduced to 4 over 3. So that would basically be 10 root r is equal to 4. Root r is equal to uh, 4 over 10. And therefore, r would be, well, 4 over 10 is 2 over 5. So r would be 4 over 25. 4 over 25 is the answer to this question.